What I found interesting is you are much older than Fobit and Emirat, but you still choose to work with Jakob Hansen. So I'm wondering in what way did he innovate your music? He just totally understands us in terms of how we want to sound. I mean, uh, I remember the first time he was just mixing, but we did not record everything in the studio. And uh, then the, the, the next album, we also recorded drums there and whatever. And uh, he totally understands this kind of music. He totally understands how we want to sound like. Mm -hmm. We go up there, Matt and I uh, go up there when we mix, and he totally already knows what we want because uh, yeah, he's a metalhead and he understands this this kind of music. And this is he's doing art on uh, what he's doing with his mixing and everything. It's uh, it's an artist as well for me, and uh, this is really to be honest, it's a great guy. Also, personally, so a very, very fabulous person. So, how do you think uh, the music was different from your previous album because he tweaked it? So, what difference did you notice? Not about the music, it's it's about the entire sound picture in the end, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much what we maybe have missed before, mm -hmm. but of course we were also happy with, but, uh, you know, what you don't know, how you should, how you could sound, you don't know. So when you know it and when you hear it, then, oh my God, yes, that's exactly how we want sound. And uh, you didn't know before, right? Because he had his input in terms of let's do it that way or that way or that way. And he just, uh, he somehow, let's say there's another layer of great color on a picture or whatever, which makes the picture more brilliant or more, more uh, contrast or whatever you want to call it, right? If you just want to use the expression of painting the picture, that might be pretty much uh, it. It's a tough one because I noticed some difference, but it's really hard to describe what's different than the other ones. Like you said, it's like different color paint, like in the picture and so on. It's like yeah, exactly. yeah. Cool. So for the viewers, you should have listened yourself and maybe you will find some differences between the other albums and this one. Yes, of course you always do. I mean, I, I of course, I'm the vocalist, I, 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 I can tell the difference of how I sounded 15 years ago or 20 years ago <laughs> to now. It's still a uh, collecting of, of experiences. And since I'm recording my vocals here at home, I know how to handle with a microphone and how to use my voice with a microphone. That's a learning phase that came with the years. And, um, and I'm so grateful for all those years I already worked with Kai in the studio, for instance, with Camel Ray, and then with Matt in the studio for, uh, producing the first Primal Fear album, being in the studio in the big room and behind the glass, and he's sitting on the console and the other guys producing vocals with me together. This helped me a lot to somehow get into the area where I'm now doing my vocals at home, and I don't want to do it anymore else than at home, because I'm the guy who kicks myself most in, in my butt <laughs> <laughs> to make it sound as like, like I want it in the end. And then I bring it to the producer, which is always mad, and say, what, what do you think of it? And he always has a great feedback in terms of totally amazing, let's do it that way, or maybe we can do some changes here and there. And that's his position as a producer to do that for every, for the, every instrument on the album in the end, and the entire production. From the first beat of the drums to the last note of mixing, Matt is involved. And uh, I'm responsible for the vocals again. But of course, <laughs> I, also, I also can say that I have good ears. So that's why I'm also involved in mixing as well to, do, uh, to, uh, to, to somehow bring out the sound picture in the end as a teamwork again. Yeah. Amazing. Check on Matt and me in the end sitting together. Yeah, you are at home so much in controls, and this explains us why. Because I listened mainly to the third album and then Metal Colo uh, uh, Commando, which was released like one year ago, and I was like, "Whoa, that's like a huge, big difference!" But like you said, it comes with experience, home studio, and 
I noticed like a big difference in quality in your voice. It's all evolved in yes. this 20 years. Yes, so exactly. new yeah. stuff is going to be better and better. Along. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the compliment also. <laughs> and as you said, uh, Ralph, you, about microphones, how many do you have? <laughs> I only and have one mic studio it's microphone. It's, no. it's my Horch, my Horch, uh, H-O-R-C-H, Horch. It's built actually in Schondorf, which is also five kilometers away, with yeah. a friend of mine. We're doing this, uh, he, he did it, of course, together, and he always wanted me to, hey, Ralph, I, I need your loud voice for develop this or that, you know? Yeah. So that's how we worked also together. And mm -hmm. as a live as a live microphone, I still have my SM58 Shure uh, uh, Beta, and I also have this KM uh, one one hundred. I'm not good in uh, remembering numbers again. <laughs> KM, KMS one hundred five or whatever that is on the Shure, yeah, which is a so very nice. brilliant live studio as well, uh, live microphone as well. So you have your own microphone. You bring your own microphone on the yes, line. yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, good stuff. And Ralph, I would like to ask you, um, how did you start at all this, you know, singing metal? How did you come to metal? Thank what you. That's a great. That's a great question. I, I always somehow sung. When my mom was turning on the radio when I was maybe nine or ten years old, I was, she was singing the harmonies and all, and I was singing along because the German Schlager music, I want to call it. <laughs> and and um, uh, I always thought, well. My voice is not sounding that bad. You, you all already had this hearing of, I'm not singing out of tune, you can so now sing. And then uh, in school, when the teachers gave me grades and notes for singing, uh, in front of the class, shaking, being nervous, uh, but always <laughs> gave me the, the best grades because uh, he also heard that I might, be able, um, I might be able to sing, you know? So that was also great support in school already. And uh, then in school, the first band started with the school bands, and then we uh, sung through a plastic microphones or a radio cassette recorder. <laughs> and that's how, in the end, everything started. And then the, the late 70s with the Scorpions and uh, uh, Accept, Judas Priest, and Iron Maiden, the new wave of British heavy metal of the 80s, somehow totally kicked my, my butt again. And uh, then I was absolutely addicted and i was influenced um, and uh, they totally gave us the inspiration of what we do now amazing like really good names like mm -hmm. and how did your experience with uh, tyrant pace uh, helped you in your future bands well i mean that was really the first time in studios recording in studios i remember <clears throat> of course we first did demos and we were somehow like five six days in, in the week and uh i i was already learning my job i was already learning my job after school and um went to my job during the day and then went to night sessions in the studio recording the first album eye to eye i remember that sleeping in the studio on the floor <laughs> <laughs> and waiting for the, the vocals to be recorded and to wake up to go to my job again. So it was pretty much like uh, yeah, learning the heart from how the school of hard knocks. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and that helped me for the future as well. It's always rock and roll is really <laughs> a tough business. When we were doing the first tour, we had uh, uh, six wheel friends or whatever. We would that was that i think it was mercedes truck and the gear, was in, the gear was in the back we had no hotel we slept in the truck and i was sleeping on the gear that night so uh it's always learning the hard hard way because there's no money to to afford hotels or whatever you know as a support band you have to pay mm. sometimes we had to pay the beginning and uh it's what we did and we always focused on being on that stage and uh that's that was the learning and uh, it was a good good time and i want to miss it hmm. but also when you're young like you don't really mind those things not like now <laughs> <laughs> that's correct <laughs> but is the life of a rockstar glamorous or is it all like fake 
Yeah, sometimes it is glamorous. I would be a liar if it's not, but uh, I don't consider myself so much as a rock star because I'm, I'm a normal person, you know. But everybody has talents in the end, and everybody uses his talents no matter what job he or, her, or she does. It's just um, using your, you find in your personal life, you find what you can do, and then you are very good in this genre or, or that sector, whatever you do. And uh, I'm happy that it's music, and uh, I'm happy that we do this in front of audience. There's so many people working in the background without audience mm -hmm. who are also stars, you know. Yeah. It's also, it's, it's, for instance, our, our crew. They are working, doing a great job for us in the background, and without them, we couldn't do the show. And without the manager, there's no tour. And without the people from the comp record company, there's no albums. So there's everybody somehow mm -hmm. is a piece and then a segment of a big, big puzzle in the end, which makes uh, the entire, which uh, is in, in the end makes the entire picture of a puzzle. Yeah, exactly. Without the crew, you'll be sitting in the dark with the microphone holding and trying to sing and make music. <laughs> True. Yeah. <laughs> So you have toured around the world, uh, Ralph, long, uh, long time. So can you tell us a bit of funny story if you have, if you remember something funny? It's always or, or it's strange. Always, or strange. It's, yeah, it's always unfair because uh, I sometimes I said to Tom, let's remind, let's remember this because we were laughing our asses off. We do this <laughs> so many, many times, but then you forget it. And I always said to Tom, let's let's remember this as a funny story because there's so many questions in the interviews. What's the what's a funny story on tour? And mm -hmm. I can't we're laughing every day. So if you forget it, there's always funny stories, right? So mm -hmm. uh, I just remember from a long time ago, which stick to my mind when I was doing a show in Japan with Gamma Ray, mm -hmm. I changed my clothes to during the long solo of Heading for Tomorrow from Kai. And mm -hmm. there was this tight pants, and I tried to get out of my pants, keeping my shoes on because I want to be quick. And that <laughs> I didn't make it because the, the pants, the trousers got stuck to my to my boots, and then <laughs> I, I had to just pull it up and go back to sing, you know. This, yeah, and uh, yeah, but the recent stories I can't remember. Next time I will remember, uh, of course. Oh yeah, yeah. now yeah. something comes into mind. I was losing a, f I, I had an accident when I, I was a soccer player in, in, in a youth, right? So I lost mm -hmm. my front teeth once, right? Oh. And and they fixed it, and they put in uh, like uh, implant, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. kept kept it for many many years, and then like four five years ago was something we we were driving to Wacken with a mm -hmm. car. And I was eating the chewing gum, and all of a sudden, oh my god! <laughs> and I lost, the teeth. I lost the tooth. So oh. uh, I said, "Wow, tomorrow I'm gonna leave fire in the darkness without without a teeth, <laughs> without a tooth." And then we had an emergency dentist. We found an emergency dentist in Hamburg who just fixed my tooth for the show, but wow. that was uh, that was somehow uh, <laughs> provisorium. <laughs> Well, mm -hmm. and then I got another implant again to do it properly. That was an accident from soccer, which somehow I lost my tooth. And, and like 30 years, 20 years later, I lost it again on the, on the trip to the show to Bakken. That was embarrassing, you know. <laughs> but it's but then again, it was lucky that I lose, didn't lose it on stage, right? <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, yes. it would be something. A front man without it, that would be an experience going into history books. <laughs> I suppose some fan would love to keep a souvenir. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they would be fighting there, making more spit. <laughs> good, good. Actually, speaking about fans, yeah, we have some questions here. Yeah. Um, where was this? So question from Brazil, from Paola. Not about uh, your favorite uh, Primal Fear song and album. It's a very tough question as well. Like we have so many songs, and uh, it's always unfair to choose uh, a favorite song. But uh, I love Supernova. That's why I did an, uh, a video uh, some weeks ago. Because we also want to somehow keep it interesting for our fans now as we can't play live. We want to put out a candy here and there. That's why I uh, cut together a little bit of a video for the song Supernova. 
because it's just a beautiful melody with uh, what Matt came up with that once again. And then, of course, the Seven Seals album, the entire album. I love the song Seven Seals and uh, uh, beautiful track. And yeah, but basically, if you are releasing an album, you're already in love with every song. Otherwise, you would not release it, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But of course, we can have some favorites, yeah. Yeah. But it's again like the child, which is your favorite child. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how how fantastic is a song like "Fighting the Darkness"? You know, it's also, but it's different. It's not, you, you like the heavy metal songs, and sometimes you like the 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 uh, the atmospherical songs like "Fighting the Darkness" and "Diabolos." And mm -hmm. you know, from Metal Commando, it's in Infinity. What a beautiful song! You know, very so, good song, very good song. Yeah, yeah. So somebody, Declan uh, Gauntley, mentioned that he last seen uh, Primal Fear in two thousand five, and because of that, he feels old. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we have Jesus saying that uh, he met you in Barcelona in nineteen ninety six, and now he's a friend. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, I miss you, man. We need to, to to drink a beer after after the show in Rasmatas. We always meet in, in Barcelona <laughs> and, and have a beer together. He's a nice uh, friend of the band. Rasmatas, very good venue. Yeah. yeah. So he's asking about your duet with Tarja. So is there anything else you would like to, to share about that, what you didn't say before already? Yeah, I mean it's a it's a it's a dream come true somehow because we were of course we knew Ta everybody knows Taya from like, from the times of uh, Nightwish, mm -hmm. and uh, I remember this show in Poland we did once when Nightwish uh, was headlining in the end. No, I think Iron Maiden and it was before it was Nightwish, but we had the show and it was like fifty five degrees on stage. The sun was blasting into my face. Yeah. And then, uh, and after the show, we have several beers or whatever. And, and then we were standing on the side of the stage, watching Nightwish and and uh, to, watching the show it was just overwhelmingly impressive. And so it's a great honor to be on that song with her together. It's just great, and we're so happy to have her on, uh, as a guest on this track. And it like once again turned out really amazing. Yeah, I can imagine that she has like a certain way to express emotion into a song. Absolutely, beautiful voice, yeah. I'm very interested because a viewer mentioned something. Where's the this one? So, he just um, mentioned you recorded a song in Spanish and he said very good pronunciation. And yeah. I'm very interested because I have no idea that you sung a song in Spanish. So, I'd yes. like to know. Which one it was? It was just recently. It's a cover track. It's uh, Entre Dos Terras. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because this is also background. I have a student from South Argentina. Oh, okay. and, and he said, we, are gonna, we will cover the song Entre Dos Terras. And uh, so uh, I was very interested because uh, there's a background, there's a personal background story because my friend who died many years ago, some years ago, not so many years ago, we used to somehow sit together and there's a phrase in the song and this culpa is, is uh, translated as guilt right mm -hmm. but for us culpa sounded like cheers so we always uh sit there and, cheer. Culpa. and that's that's the story my personal story behind the song Entre dos Tierras is culpa, right? So, because I was doing this with my best buddy from school who died mm -hmm. several years ago, and that's my little homage. Um, I wanted to con contribute in that song. And um, then, of course, I got familiar with the lyrics and totally understood that it's totally, it's, it's, uh, the meaning is some, something totally different, of course. And I try to pronounce it as good as I can, but you always listen how the original sounds. And uh, so in the end, I tried my very best. And I think it turned out well. People liked it. It was a great reaction from Spanish fans and from, from South American fans. That, that's great. So you sung a song that, uh, uh, with a language you don't speak, correct? Yes. Singing is, singing is uh, because that's why singers might have the talent to learn languages because the languages 
have a lot to do with melody, you know, uh, speaking in a language is somehow like a melody, you know, and, uh, but pronunciation, that's tough sometimes. And of course, uh, uh, the, the grammar is always the, the most difficult stuff. You don't, yeah. you don't know anything about grammar when you, when you are just singing a song. Sometimes you don't even understand what you sing in a different language when you then you, you, you read the translation to it, right? And then you can put your emotion into it when you understand what was the what's the sense behind it. Amazing! I will look the song the band, up. The band is Heroes de Silencio. I think Heroes de Silencio. You know, I, I might not pronounce it uh, properly. As in, I don't know, Hero, Hero, Heroes de Silencio. Yeah. But, uh, anyway. Maybe Jesus, Jesus can tell me already. Entre los tierras son giros de silencio. Entre los tierras, entre los tierras, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and would you think it would work uh, opposite? Like we said that um, those who, uh, the musician can learn many languages, so those who learn many languages can become singers? Maybe that's the, that's the back part. That's the reverse story. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I should learn all languages. Like I'm making progress in French, German. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Do you speak other languages except English and German? Uh, yeah, a little bit of Greek. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, but not so much. But I can somehow handle things when I'm in Greece because I had uh, a, a friend in the gym. He was uh, Greek many oh. years ago, and we and, and he always learned me some words. Of course, you always learn the bad stuff first. But uh, yes. I can I, I can still <laughs> handle somehow like Galitra uh, and all kind of stuff. You know the funny stuff and also the, the good stuff you need, um, but. Then again, if it comes to grammar, it's... Mm -hmm. it's yes. Yeah. You could sing in Greek, maybe. Maybe one day, yeah, who knows? Yeah. Yes, yes, that's the thing I'm looking forward to. And friends. Matiamu, Matiamu, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> very nice, very nice. <laughs> so Jesus is asking, would you be considering a show in Vatican? Maybe oh. a show in Vatican, yeah, if they let us. We played in the church when we did the American tour. There mm. was uh, there was an old skirt uh, church. They they made a venue out of that. It was uh, pretty much. It, it was interesting because there's. I think there's um, in the dressing room somebody was murdered <laughs> many, many years ago. So we, we played some crazy crazy places, man. So that's that's really interesting sometimes when you do those venues and okay. Uh, I'm dressing myself for the show for the show on a place where somebody got murdered. <laughs> oh, so. Like in the church before it was a church, that's what the, the thing happened. Yeah, something was wrong with the priest. Uh, I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. but Speaking about churches, I know if you heard it, in Netherlands, church concerts are becoming popular. So, like, uh, Taria is doing one on the... Well, Taria will do one if the COVID uh, is gone. And Annika is doing also churches and so on. So it would be nice to see Primal Fear performing in a Dutch church because we have the room and so on. Yeah. Do you, you have a good class insurance? Why not? <laughs> We hope Maybe. to see you here in Ireland sometime because I don't think you have been here in Ireland then. Eh? In Ireland, we were, uh, yes, we, was it? In, yeah, we, okay. we, yeah, we played in Dublin. Oh, right. Well. Yes, yes. And I remember the Temple Bar and everything. We were around yeah, the place. Right. Yeah, it was you cool. Did when was that? Ah, when was that? Good question. When was that? Help me, somebody. <laughs> I can't. It was in 2007 or something. Can't remember. Mm. And we visited, of course, Finn, Phil Lynott's grave and everything, so a graveyard yeah. place and all, all the beautiful uh, uh, green. Yeah, it was just great. Yeah. Oh, yeah friend, we actually asked the same question, and then they have a second part there. Will Primal Fear consider um, uh, Ireland's tour when they will do uh, Metal Commando? Uh, yeah. Tour? 
So here's something I want to say anyway. Prime of Fear, the musicians always want to go everywhere. We, we play everywhere, even in the toilet or whatever. But, you know, the thing is that, you know, you have your business partners, you have the promoters and everything. And I know everybody knows that the entire scene will be changed after this pandemic tragedy anyway because mm -hmm. you don't know how many people how many uh, venues will survive how many promoters will survive and so forth there's even bands struggling to continue because there's no chance mm -hmm. and this is going to be the uh, the big question mark which will uh, come up uh, what countries can we still play in and, and and in terms of uh, the UK and so forth, it's also not so easy with the Brexit. You know, there's always yeah. this, this uh, political yes. background as well, which is no excuse. There's really hard rules behind that, which you have to be somehow or you have to obey. And mm. in the end, uh, if you can't go, you can't go. And it's not always uh, that you want to have profit of the show. You want to go there and, and have a good time, and, and, and of course support your music and be there for the fans but if it's in the end if you're coming home bankrupt it makes no sense so it has there's always a little bit of money background as well because uh, like i say you don't come home to be bankrupt in the end if this if it's break even if there's this black zero in the end we're fine sometimes you you also have a loss and you go you do shows mm -hmm. um, you know so it's a little bit maybe too much blabbering about the business but that's the way it goes yeah except yeah exactly it has to that be sustainable was yeah. <laughs> it was my next question about the how do you see the scene after all this uh, finished <laughs> I, uh, well I'm, I'm i'm a positive person but i know as long as it takes and it's the case right now because we all all these mutations are going on and mm -hmm. i'm very tired everybody's tired of listening to the stuff which comes in coming in the news but it's it's the it's the it, well it's the naked fact and that's that's the, the hard thing behind it you know there are these mutations and they're changing everything in the end let's let's just hope that we will come out of this pretty soon mm -hmm. yep. yes yes that's for sure Indeed. <laughs> we need festivals and concerts. <laughs> That's what we need. It's like yes. our <laughs> good stuff happened as well, like we see below. So yes, that's what yes. uh, Gontle is asking: Would Ralph be interested in working with Gamma Ray again after seeing thirty years of awesomeness? It would. It, it was great to see him reunited with Kai. Yes, the good thing is we recorded that that show, and there's going to mm -hmm. be a DVD released from that show. And um, yes, they have their singer with Frank, you know. So, but I'm always uh, interested to show up as a guest if I have the time. But you know what's going to happen when when it's possible to tour again? Everybody will tour, right? So, yes. <laughs> so I might be. We all might be very, very busy with our own bands, and that's of course. Well, then we are lucky people again. But then it's going to be the market's going to be just stuffed. Everybody's going out there. Yes. And, you know, uh, and also, you know, bands from America, they have the advantages, they don't need the working visas. If we go to America, we first need the working visa visas. We already paid working visas to do a tour, mm. which was cancelled and, uh, and got, you know, lost a lot of money in terms of having these working visas, which never happened. And that's what we have to do again if we go there. So, um, yeah. and. Then next year, everything is so busy, everything is postponed to another year, to another year. And then, of course, you, you have to do somehow your priorities in the end, which yes. are, which were there first. And then you can't do everything at once. So we mm -hmm. cannot go to, to Europe and to America at the same time. It's impossible. <laughs> that, that will happen next year. So we have to somehow decide, yeah. But I don't want to yeah. say too much anyway, because you can't in the end. Yeah, but I mean, imagine for fans, it will be art as well. It will be clashing schedules and so on. It will be a lot of bands touring at the same time and so on. It's like, which one to pick? Like, yes, <laughs> everyone on the tour bus. And there might be change in the audience as well because many people might have the fear to go there. Yes. Because being afraid, you know. Mm -hmm. I know there's, I mean, in the end, when you think about it, nobody cared about the 
the bird flu, the pig flu, or whatever. But now, but now everything is so big that mm -hmm. all this panic in one hand is uh, somehow um, making people nervous and, and, and having fear to go to have mm -hmm. big gatherings again without masks and so forth. That's that's also a little bit of a changing of a mindset in the end. Yeah, yeah, that's mm -hmm. for sure. Let's see, let's see <laughs> where we are going. Let's see. Oh, we have other questions? Yes, yeah, so fewer. Here. Well, yes, here you can do it as well in the future. Never say never. You don't know. Because we always decide this very, very uh, short term, you know. Mm -hmm. Whenever we think we somehow it's uh, a good thing to do, then we are having a meeting and discuss it. What was your longest tour, Ralph? Longest tour? That was, I think it was America, 2014, mm -hmm. something like that, yeah. It was a month? Yes, one and a half months, and uh, then we just came home for a week, then we did Europe or something, and then there was South America. So oh. it pretty much happening at once sometimes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. So is there any musician who you would love uh, to meet on tour and never did? Well, yeah, I mean, there's some uh, the guys from Aerosmith and never met, for instance, quite interesting. And But uh, during years, we met many people who were, for me, were my somehow uh, role models, like Rob Halford, for instance. Uh, mm -hmm. What a great person and, and, and a friendly person he is, you know, so... This is also helping to somehow, because you always somehow think how is that, who is that person, how is that person, and, and, and how is he behaving. And they're also so grounded and, and, and down to earth, and that's really nice. And, and you know, it's always a great experience. It's a great experience. There are some people who are behaving like snobs or whatever, but um, maybe they would be the same if they would be just a carpenter or whatever. So it's just a personal thing, right? Yeah. It's a, it's a character thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So speaking about Judas Priest, we have here a question. In your top three bands, maybe Judas Priest and two more? Yeah, there was a, there was a time when I was still a fan. I mean, I'm still a fan of the music, and, uh, but uh, you're not this fanboy anymore. <laughs> in the 80s, of course, you worship Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, except in all those bands you met now. And that's the great thing. You met them, which mm -hmm. doesn't change. There's always this respect, but you are now doing your own kind of thing for many years and also also successful. Of course, not as, as successful as those big uh, 80 metal bands, Maiden, Priest, and Saxon and so forth. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're doing quite well and... Uh, we're having a lot of uh, respect from each other to each other. What that's what you say, and uh, that's also a good thing. So you mentioned a lot of old, uh, like from the eighties. But I'm wondering, do you also listen, and are you a fan of new bands who are like from two thousand, like Ghost or something? That yeah, yeah. If it comes, if it comes up occasionally because I'm so busy in my own thing in my ears. I'm really, I'm, I'm in a danger to be, to, be, to be deaf soon and. So that's well, I'm really happy when I just sometimes when I put out my my all my gear and just have quietness and, and silence in the end. But uh, when something comes up uh, on YouTube or sometimes you just go to the timeline on, on, on Instagram or whatever and see mm -hmm. some new stuff and hear some new stuff, it's it's great stuff coming there, right? Really good stuff. And well, I can't tell you any names because you know, but mm -hmm. uh, when I hear it, I'm always impressed. Uh, there are good musicians coming up, and that's great. Great. Uh, Declan also mentioned that uh, he met you at Bloodstock UK, um, 2004, in us assembly room before the big, uh, before the gig outside shows. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's always great. Or sometimes we are going out. I'm going out after a festival, for instance, sometimes, and just mingle with the crowd. And have a, have, a, have a beer or whatever, and, and sometimes you have to just run because then too many people would come to have a, a picture or <laughs> autograph. But so yeah. sometimes you're just hiding a little bit and, and watch the band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
and go to find. <laughs> I guess I was never that lucky one. <laughs> Seems like a few, few times, but yeah, no. Yeah, sometimes I just go out, but uh, then again, like I say, some people, if, if so, two or three people recognize you, then all of a sudden, many yes. people come, and then you just <laughs> you just run to the backstage again. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and then the thing is, like, one band is playing there in front and everyone runs from the band who is playing her after you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as you mentioned before, you don't have so much time to listen, you know, new bands from 2000s. But uh, you would like to speak about the Halloween, new Halloween song today. Yes, I heard, I heard the entire album and I really think it's it's a blast. It's, She's really amazing, great album. Yeah, people yeah. will love it. So we look forward for Halloween. And yes. what do you think about the reunion? It's a great thing. I mean, you know, there's always, of course, there's always a business side. But I think if they would not somehow stand one at one hundred percent behind the idea, then it would not happen. So there is a chemistry, and there was a chemistry in Halloween. And of course, in the end, there's always management and, 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 and uh, business partners who are interested to do that. But in mm -hmm. the end, it's the it's every single musician deciding it if they want to do it or not. I can speak for them once again. It's not me, but uh, yeah. I know I, of course, and um, and I also know that he always loved Halloween. He started with Halloween, and in the end, um, mm -hmm. that's uh, maybe the, the the motor behind it to to the motivation to do it again. Mm -hmm. Great, great. So let's go back to you. So mm -hmm. what I noticed, like you are in Prime Fair, you have several side projects, but I saw that you released in 2011 Rolf Schaper's album. So I think it was a solo project. So I'm wondering why did you step out of Prime Fair back then? And how was it different than Prime Fair? Well, I never stepped out of Prime Fair. It was just, it was just an off year. In yeah, terms of, uh, yeah. In terms of writing for Prime of Fear, and I had collected so many ideas which I had for many years on my hard disk, and uh, which were somehow not really fitting one hundred percent into Prime of Fear. And of course, I had my ghost writers and my my people who were helping me help <laughs> writing songs. Uh, um, yes, and so the album came together. It was a little bit different, but uh, that's what an, uh, what a solo album somehow should be. You know, if you do the same thing, it makes no sense. And of course, there are songs on it which which could be a Prime Fear album, but not not every track. Exactly, it was great and different at the same time. Like Thank you. songs were like more heavy metal, I think, and mm -hmm. so on. So I'm wondering right now: Have you collected some songs that you might pull, put on a solo album, or you have not? Yes, I have. I have so collected some, but you know, um, yeah, I'm always somebody who needs a partner to complete the song in the end, at least the guitars, because I, I'm playing guitars, I'm strumming on my acoustic guitar, but when mm -hmm. it comes to to real playing and recording stuff, I would need a partner to somehow uh, uh, bring my ideas together with somebody on the guitar. Yeah, so like, um, and then of course you always have your friends and band members. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I assume drums are as well handy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, drums? Uh, yeah, drums, like. I assume drums are most of the use of the band, so I assume you have also some drums uh, in, this, in your albums, in your yeah. solo one. Yeah, it was Snowy Shaw. Snowy, Snowy played the drums. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So interesting. He's a great musician. He can play guitar, sing, and drum, and, and bass, and whatever. I mean, he's, he's, he's an all around talent. <laughs> Amazing. He was just playing the drums on my solo album. So mm -hmm. uh, the guitars were played by, by Magnus and, and uh, also by Sander Gomans, uh, mm -hmm. who was, uh, I think he did music with uh, Floor Janssen in, in uh, what was mm -hmm. the band's name after? After, after forever, after forever. forever. So, I'm not sure so if you remember names, but they made music <laughs> together years ago, and he helped me also with, with uh, two tracks. Then there was Alex Spirit uh, helping with the song, and uh, Magnus, Matt, 
and I did a cover track of my first uh, uh, band, Time Pace Saints of Rock. So, and in the end, we got it complete. And Kai played solos on it, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> amazing. It's like uh, you have a lot of guest <laughs> instruments and so on. So we, so, we have here it's someone <laughs> who wants to be your guitarist. Yes, he's, <laughs> he's, he's my vocal student and he's a great guitarist as well. Yes. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs> Happy before singing. Yes, I'm warming up. <laughs> I always do this before singing, or I never do this before singing. Well, it's uh, you have your bad experience when you have dinner or food before a show, it's absolutely that's for me a totally killer because you're singing from the diaphragm mm -hmm. and when the stomach is full, the diaphragm is not as flexible as, as uh, it can be when the stomach is not really empty, but uh, not full in the end, right? So I, I need this flexibility. And sometimes you have only one chance a day to eat. <laughs> and, if this, and if this one chance is maybe one hour before the show, it's too late. So. Then mm -hmm. I might have nothing or keep it for after the show, but mm -hmm. I do not eat like at least two hours before the show. That kills my scene totally. And I don't drink uh, uh, water with gas because that's the same thing. It fills everything up. Um, it might, you might, might burp to singing or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and, and I'm warming up with my certain tools I have. And you will learn about it when you book some lessons with me. <laughs> yeah, nice, <one. laughs> nice promotion. <laughs> Did with something special before the concert or some something like not very heavy? I have a sip of white wine actually because that somehow relaxes me. As a vocalist, you're not only singing; you're always also a frontman and a showman. Who are who is supposed to speak in between the songs and you know um, whether that is born or not sometimes you have good days and you have bad days but the sip of white wine always helped me to relax a little bit but you know that that's not working for everybody I can only speak for myself if it's getting too much because I still drink during the show. Sometimes I have the white wine bottle. I say I should stop because you then you you lose intonation and you lose you lose, you lose the lyrics. <laughs> I forget the lyrics. So when when I'm not good in lyrics, I I, I can tell I had too much, right? So uh, at, the beginning, at the beginning of a tour, you always start with a little bit of white wine. And by the end of the tour, the entire bottle is empty during the show, and that's not good. <laughs> and the most important one is like to get the right bottle because some white wine is fourteen percent, like killing. Yeah, <laughs> you get some, you get some vinegars once in a while. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And what would you recommend for the viewers who would like to do some lessons with you? Just write me personal messages, and we we get in contact, and uh, we just. Uh, make an agreement and uh, start yeah That's and like great. i say i have very beginners and i have already people who are i mean i have two students from america nick seamer for instance is just amazing vocalist and, and also adam damlinger he's um, also an amazing vocalist and um, yes. <laughs> they learned something they they told me they learned a lot from me, but I always say you have to bring a lot natural wise, and that's what they already have, right? And then I can show them some hints and, and some stuff how they can do uh, warming up and stuff. And also I do technical advices like microphone compressors, live gear, studio gear, whatever. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of uh, things I can tell my experience. And would uh, my complete beginners would they need to have any microphones? What uh, what kind of equipment would they need to have to start? No, they don't need anything because we're doing it via Skype nowadays. Anyway, we can get uh, people who are coming from my area. They are they were coming to my house, but it's not possible anymore. So it's on Skype or mm -hmm. in Zoom or whatever. And uh, then we you just use the gear you have on your laptop. It's it's working mm -hmm. pretty well. Mm -hmm. It was a trial at the beginning, of course, but after so many years, it's working still very great and very good. Great, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. 
Oh, about wine? Look, someone has a question. Doesn't wine make your throat dry? Yes, you're correct. Basically, alcohol is not good anyway. So well, don't do it. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. I thought beer is good. I said it's just for relaxation. Alcohol mm -hmm. dries out the throat in the long term. So the, the sip I have before a show is not much. So it would not dry my throat because I'm drinking like three and a half to four liters water a day. And that's also very, very important, <laughs> not only as a vocalist, also as a healthy human being to have water during the day. Mm -hmm. And that helps me in the end that I don't dry out so fast. Oh, so you don't yeah. smoke? I don't smoke. That's the, that's also good advantage. Uh, I never got addicted to smoking. <laughs> oh, I think that's... So I think that's everything. I don't see any fewer questions anymore. So, all right. So thank you all uh, for joining. And we want to thank the viewers for participating, asking the questions. And don't forget to subscribe as we will be back uh, next week. And join our group, The Metal Galaxy. And support Rolf and especially get the new album with Daria or the newest one, Metal Club Mendel. All links uh, below. So thank you, Rolf. Thank you to the viewers. And we want to thank Rolf for telling us about Primal Fair, but also always experience as a vocalist. So I'm passing now the microphone to Rolf so he can end it up. Thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure. It's always great uh, to get interesting questions and to, to, to blubber about my, my <laughs> past and about the future as well. So yeah. Um, I don't want to bash out some phrases, but of course, the most important thing is stay healthy. Happy Easter in the Thank coming you. days. Yes. And uh, have a good time with your families. Stay safe. And uh, hopefully, we have the chance to meet each other again pretty amazing. soon. Yeah, that will be amazing. Primal fear or something else from you. Yeah. That will be yes. all good. <laughs> An island, the best. But otherwise, yeah. we'll travel. So. <laughs> Thanks so, for having Thank me. You. Thank you. All the Thank best you. for you guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 <laughs>